Welcome to episode 45 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this week's episode, I sat down with Ave Aras from Nortel in Estonia. Ave came on my radio already last year when her and her team at Nortel won the Sourcing Challenge that we ran together with Amazing Hiring and SourceCon. This wasn't a normal challenge, but it was a two month challenge where the teams of different companies and different countries were competing against each other and eventually led to the final in, at SourceCon in Amsterdam, uh, where Ave's team and Nortel won the whole thing. Ave also recently won a sourcing challenge, Amazing Hiring Hackathon uh, that we did back in February. So she definitely knows her ways around hackathon. I asked Ava how she got started in sourcing. I was just thinking about this earlier, like uh, when can I pinpoint the first <laughs> kind of stuff that might be related to sourcing? And I think it was uh, straight after high school, I started working in a library as a librarian. So that's kind of, I didn't, of course, think of that uh, skill set as being useful in the future when it comes to recruiting and sourcing. But uh, that's when I first uh, did like Boolean and, uh, and information searching in general. So uh, I just today like put those two things together, like, oh, <laughs> that was the first time I encountered Boolean search. Uh, so that was in like 2011, I think. Uh, from there, I kind of went into uh, working with kids. So I was a kindergarten teacher for quite a many years. Uh, eventually I figured out that it wasn't really for me. <laughs> so that's when I started looking for kind of an office job uh, type of situation. So I went to work as an office assistant and quite fast I got the opportunity to uh, start helping in recruitment. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was like really uh, low skilled uh, jobs that I was uh, recruiting for and it was mostly just like post a job ad and invite people in for the interview. So Post and pray. And <laughs> yeah. Post and pray, exactly. <laughs> but it was working and for those positions uh, there wasn't really anything extra kind of needed. And uh, in that same company like slowly I started coordinating the IT recruitment, uh, doing some candidate communication and stuff like that. Uh, that's when I also heard about like actually sourcing for people and <laughs> being more proactive, um, but I didn't get a chance to do it there. And uh, a little while later, I joined Norta uh, as a junior IT recruiter. Uh, by then, I had started Googling myself, like, what does a technical recruiter do and what is sourcing and, like, the very basic stuff. Uh, and I would say where my, like, love of sourcing actually started was uh, uh, the Sourcing Summit in Amsterdam in, oh, what was it, 2016 or 17? Something like that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was kind of my first uh, realization of how much there actually is beneath the surface, how much is possible. You can be doing very technical stuff or not technical at all, at all but there's value in kind of everything. And from that, I kind of started spiraling uh, further and further into the sourcing rabbit hole. <laughs> so um, that's kind of where I got my start. And uh, I would say uh, for me, uh, there's been a lot of like amazing people I have learned from, uh, but it's also very much, uh, you have to have an interest for it. Yeah. And maybe even a, kind of the personality type where you want to figure your stuff out. So this is uh, also, I love uh, learning about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. So kind of this um, search for, constant search for knowledge is also really helpful. Like, did you have specific courses or training or books that that really helped you in the beginning or was it just a like, kind of combination of everything? When I started, uh, it was just, here's a role, 
uh, here's the spec for it, start sourcing. Um, I had um, my first boss in Norte. Uh, she helped a lot to get, there were uh, two junior recruiters, so me and uh, one other. And she did like in-house uh, training for us a little bit, like the basics of Boolean and stuff like that. Uh, but it was really like, as I mentioned before, going to a sourcing summit. And from there, it just started uh, trying things out, Googling stuff. Uh, if there was like a hackathon or something, I tried to participate. Uh, so I, I, I would also say like a lot of these uh, skills that I have, the knowledge that I have is, has also come from uh, doing hackathons. Mm -hmm. Because like I, uh, being an in-house recruiter, like there's a specific skill set you're always recruiting for and sourcing for. So you don't maybe get the bigger picture. Uh, so I, I've learned a lot from there, uh, I would say. Uh, but um, also stuff like uh, uh, the sourcing games uh, that uh, Jan did. Uh, I tried those out as much as I could. Uh, if I encountered something that I couldn't solve, then it was just constant Googling, asking people. So I haven't really done any specific trainings. It's just being proactive yourself and uh, trying to uh, get as much knowledge as you can. <laughs> Especially recently with hackathons as well. You've done it sessionally well, uh, not just, you know, in hackathons. Like, so you just won the hackathon that we did, uh, Amazing Hiring and Sourcing Challenge Hackathon in February. Uh, your team won, which I think a lot of people don't understand how much that actually took. Your team in Nortel won the the team challenge last year that Amazing Hiring and SourceCon did, mm -hmm. which was, I think we had 72 teams start. Uh, we then ended up with 16 going to the kind of final, which took, what, two months. Um, and you ended up actually being in the, the live final in Amsterdam against another Estonian team from uh, from both. Um, I, what is it that specifically, well, you and the Nortel team is doing to, to just become really good at, at the hackathons? Uh, so, what I want to mention, what I'm really proud of, uh, this was actually the second Amazing Hiring uh, Hackathon I won in a row. So the last one was in November and I won that one too. <laughs> so, I'm like really proud. <laughs> uh, but I would say with Nortal, we uh, do a lot of uh, in-house knowledge sharing. And not only within recruitment, uh, but also like it's the company culture. Uh, there's constant, uh, like, there's book clubs, there's lightning talks, there's bigger retros, and everyone is invited to everything. So I think it's this sharing mindset that's uh, really embedded, uh, that really helps us along. And if anyone uh, sees some new sourcing hack, we always share it. Uh, I've done uh, some internal uh, sourcing trainings for, like, new recruiters who, who join us. So... I think it's that, and uh, with the team challenge in Amsterdam last year, what we learned was keep it simple <laughs> when it comes to kind of hackathons. And uh, our MVP really was Kadi, who doesn't do sourcing daily. <laughs> and her approach was just really easy. While me and Annette, who are sourcing daily, tried to do the most complicated things <laughs> to find the answers. And this is kind of what uh, really made it possible for us to go to the final. Uh, and this is kind of what I've now, in the recent hackathons, uh, tried to make myself do. Like, don't overthink it. Because I made all the questions and had access, fully access to the back end, what nobody saw other than me uh, was that, so I could see exactly when you answered the questions. So I could see if one person got the answer and then everybody else in the team put the answer in as well. Uh, what I could see with your team is that you were working as a team. You could see that you were all trying different things and then, but you were working together in finding all the answers. So you had some teams who went far in the competition where it was one person basically carrying the whole, like they were the one trying out things and doing the answers. Uh, and the rest of the team just kind of, you know, tagging along. Whereas your team was very much, you could see that, yes, sometimes it was you, sometimes it was your you know, team members who got the answer right, and then you, you moved on with that. 
um, which was part of why what I wanted with the competition as well, because like the sourcing hackathons is normally always individually based uh, and very, very rarely team based, which is something I wanted to do for a long time, um, because most if you're lucky and actually get to be in a team, it's a team sport uh, and sourcing shouldn't always be individual. So and I was really proud of that to see that as your team to kind of like you are you were working as a team and that you went all the way uh, and won it. Um, because you could see the ones that, that there was a few teams that consistently worked as a team and they were the ones that went very far. And there were some that, you know, had one star, um, but you can't always win everything just by having one good source. Because as you say, sometimes you just overthink it, uh, which uh, like some of the some of the best sources in the world were stuck on questions that they weren't simple, but the way to solve it was simple. But because like they probably knew too much, they were overthinking it. So absolutely agree. Yeah, on those questions, it was always Gadi who kind of came through and <laughs> and uh, got us to the next question. Tell us about Estonia. I mean, obviously, being in a country that has well less people than you know Copenhagen, um, how do you how do you recoup? How do you source? It's not like you're the only company looking for those people either in Nordal. Um There's a lot of companies, yeah, you know, wanting the same talent. What do you do in a country like Estonia? The pool is definitely very small here. Uh, IT sector is not that big. <laughs> I mean, we do have like a lot of uh, startups. There's some unicorns around. So there's definitely this um, innovative and like techy mindset in, I would say, the whole nation and population. Uh, but uh, how we kind of differentiate ourselves on the market is we really put a lot of effort into uh, nurturing our talent pool. So candidate uh, experience, candidate communication, we try to keep everything on a very, very high level and uh, not kind of do this uh, that I still see people doing the spray and pray, just like make a list and put everything, uh, the same template to those. Uh, because it's just, I, even I like get uh, reach outs that are not really meant for my profile. So, and from Estonian recruiters as well sometimes. So it's kind of sad to see that, uh, but it is changing. So I would say nurturing your talent pool, uh, making sure candidates have an awesome experience because we have a lot of people, for example, that we make an offer to, they don't accept for some reason half a year passes and then they hit us up again like hey now i'm interested <laughs> so we've made a lot of hires like that and we try to keep ourselves uh, constantly on the map so we go to all the uh, events that are for developers for testers for our other key roles so it's uh, kind of remaining human no one wants to speak to a company <laughs> so also kind of building uh, personal relationships, not just relationships between the company and the uh, candidate. So. And what kind of tools do you, uh, do you use in your, like for your sourcing or, or in general? Like, do you have any kind of go-to um, that, that you love using or always use? I would say Amazing Hiring has been really great for technical roles because we are uh, recruiting in many different countries. So Nortel is actually a kind of global group of uh, uh, different companies. So a lot of uh, recent recruitment has been in the Finnish market, mm -hmm. all over in different cities. And the amazing hiring really kind of helps us understand the local market better as well. Uh, I recently also did some sourcing for our US office. So again, like going in blind, it's a bit difficult, but uh, Amazing Hiring has helped. Uh, what else? Oh, my absolute favorite tools that I use are actually uh, some bookmarklets mm -hmm. uh, that I found somewhere. <laughs> and uh, that on it, uh, the other sorcerer in Nortel has been kind of maintaining because she has a background in IT, so she oh. actually can program. So if it breaks, then... <laughs> 
uh, then she will help me. But it's like uh, LinkedIn search, GitHub search, so you highlight the name in the browser, you click it, and then it finds, uh, finds it in the uh, social media. Those are my, like, I use those the most. Uh, Multi-highlight uh, mm -hmm. is also in daily use. So I would say, like, those three are the ones that pop into my head uh, at the moment. But there are many others <laughs> as well that I use. But again, I try to keep it as simple as possible. X-ray searching Google is always like my number one go-to mostly. So For the people who don't know, uh, Sourcing Summit was in Estonia last year. Uh, it's coming back this, again this year. Uh, let's see about the date because that may change. We don't know yet uh, since we're all stuck at home in most countries. Um, tell us about the experience of actually having Sourcing Summit in, yeah, your home country and what you know what people can expect from next year it was uh, pretty great uh because you can again with going to conferences you build relationships with people from sourcers from other countries and it's really amazing to show your own hometown <laughs> to these people and uh, kind of at least for me i always feel more relaxed when i'm at home mm -hmm. uh, including in estonia in general uh, so uh, I would say it was m much more easier to be uh, kind of open to maybe new experiences and new uh, new people. Uh, so that was pretty great, but I would uh, recommend definitely coming back to Estonia and for local people as well, checking out Sourcing Summit to, to the ones who didn't go last year. There's just so much goodness. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's going on there. The speakers are always amazing. The topics they talk about, they're really well curated. Uh, and uh, just, uh, I've over also kind of seen a bit of what goes on on the organizing side uh, from, from Estonia. So it's been interesting to kind of, I haven't done anything myself. I've just seen from the side that Alut, uh, who is uh, leading that from the Estonian side. So it's been interesting, but come to Sourcing Summit, even if you are not a sourcer, because uh, again, the networking opportunity alone is worth it. And uh, you will definitely le learn something new. It might be from a talk, it might be from uh, talking to someone uh, during the break, so. I call it the hallway track, you meet people outside of a yeah of, in a break or in the bar or somewhere and uh, just get to talk with some of the best people that I some of my best friend in the industry are you know from that just met them at a conference started talking and and you find out you have a lot in common or just the question that you had somebody has an answer to and vice versa um, yeah. so definitely that that's what makes it worth it and what we're going to be like with a lot of the conferences going online now that's part of what we're going to be missing. Um, hopefully that won't be for too long, um, but definitely going to the in-person events, that's, that's what you get out of that. I would say my favorite moments from last year's uh, Sourcing Summit were the ones that happened during the breaks. Uh, I remember getting into a lengthy discussion about sourcing with uh, some recruiter, I think it, he was from Finland or I don't even remember. <laughs> But like it ended up with us uh, uh, around my laptop and me showing him like uh, <laughs> my favorite tools and stuff like that. And I actually made a shareable kind of document afterwards uh, because uh, some people from the Estonian uh, market, like especially came to ask. And I kind of, again, with this one of the mindsets of North, I like to sharing, but I also think like I'm, the kind of person, at least I like to think, <laughs> who uh, tries to be as helpful as possible. So, and I also like sharing knowledge. Like I used to be a teacher, so maybe that's also why. And I made a shareable document that now, like if anyone has questions or I see that they're still starting out and they ask for advice uh, that I share with uh, like just basic sourcing tools and how to get started and uh, the main kind of stuff, uh, GitHub, Stack Overflow, no, mostly on the technical recruitment side. Um, but um, I really do enjoy kind of sharing my knowledge as well. If 
people want to stay in touch with you, Ave, um, how can they best do that? Where can they find you? That's uh, one of the things maybe where <laughs> I am a bit different than, uh, than other maybe recruiters and sourcers who have been on. Uh, my main channel is LinkedIn. My LinkedIn profile is not very um, thorough. And uh, regarding like other social media, I'm a pretty private person. So uh, the main channel is LinkedIn. Follow me there, uh, connect with me, and uh, I'm happy to chat. Sounds good. Look, thank you for being on. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hopefully meeting you one day in Estonia, uh, but definitely meeting you again. Yes, it's right. been lovely. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> if you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.